Hey, it's your boy, Uncoopa, and I'm back with another video essay. Level design is crucial for games. Single player and multiplayer games rely on good level design. Without it, players get lost, backtrack, die repeatedly with no progress made. Throughout all of gaming history, there have been many iconic levels in multiplayer games. Like, who's gonna forget fucking Pong? Two rectangles, simple yet effective design, 10 out of 10 masterpiece. But then you got Facing Worlds, Dust 2, Blood Gulch, Nuketown, fucking two fort for some reason, I never figured that one out. Imagine if those games didn't have those maps. Imagine if CSGO, instead of having Dust 2 and Mirage, only had Militia and Vertigo. CSGO wouldn't be up here, I can tell you that much. It'd be here. And the games that last the longest generally have a strong community producing content. Fuck, Doom World over here has been spitting out fan-made content for nearly two decades. And that's why today, and in part two, we're talking level design and TF2 again, because you people seem to like that. What makes a good map? Each game mode tends to have one or two great maps that are played way more than the others. And what makes a point fun? What makes a flank interesting? How does a theme influence a map? Other mappers might think differently, but I see level design in TF2 as a blend of two different styles of design. Dictative and non-dictative. Dictative is where the geometry commands how an area is played. It's very linear, like a window that is only good for sniping, or a choke point designed to funnel players in a certain way. Non-dictative is meant to be abused. It allows for freedom and creative play. Here we are in game on Barn Blitz to take a look at a few examples. Here is a very good example of a dictative route. This doorway on Barn Blitz is notorious for being a fucko to push through. It dictates that players must come in through here and go through there and there's really not much room to move. This doorway is a pretty good example of non-dictative. Now while some would say it's dictative because it's a doorway, it's pretty choky. It's non-dictative because it's abused in a lot of ways, usually by having a sentry here which cuts off this high ground flank, but also abused by attackers themselves by lobbying pills or rockets up through here to take out the sentries in this otherwise dictative area through here. This is a good blend of dictative and non-dictative design. With so many different routes and sight lines available from this building, it's very easy to see how this is non-dictative and can be abused. Many different classes can gain advantage from different areas here, and it often makes for quite interesting flank fights. Some games tend to stick one way or another, like CSGO's is very non-dictative, and Overwatch is very dictative. TF2 blends the concepts nicely. A good use of this is 5 CP Spires. The ramps and height demand that a player expose themselves and try to control the high ground. But because of this, other players can abuse the weakness. By rocket jumping over or sniping them off, a good blend tends to involve risk reward. Each flank, height advantage, choke point and doorway serves these purposes. And a map that uses them wisely will always play better than one that leans too far one way or another. Too dictative and it becomes choky and grindy. If it's non-dictative, then power classes like soldier and sniper run rampant. I can think of a few maps with this issue. It's about balance. A balanced map will generally be balanced. Wait, a map with balanced roots will play balanced for teams. That's much less memorable, but I hope it makes sense. But how are maps made? Hammer World Editor is Source Engine's mapping tool. It's the same tool used to make Portal 1, 2, Counter-Strike Source, Global Offensive, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2, Half-Life 2 and Gmod maps. All those games and more. It's an improved version of Gold Source's World Editor, which itself is an improved version of the original Quake's Worldcraft. It's been around the block. You can't scale or reshape models. There's no mesh editing. Geometry is made up of objects called brushes. Brushes are basically polygonal shapes, but their faces cannot be convex or concave. Displacements are brush faces turned into a net. If you've seen a gentle hill in a source game, it's a displacement. They're meant for terrain and are really fiddly. Then you have entities. If it's a fence or a capture point or a health kit or a light or a doorway, it's an entity. Editable map files for source are creatively titled Valve Map Files, or VMFs for short. And when compiled, they turn into binary space partitioning or 
BSPs for short. This is playable by the game. Hammer might be an old tool, and it might be tough to learn, but those that learn it can do amazing things. And for some, it becomes a passion. And for an even smaller number of those passionate folk, it becomes a job. But it's mostly good fun. I started mapping in October of 2014. I wanted to make a map for a long time, but I took one look at Hammer, couldn't figure out how to make a cube, and shut it down. What actually sparked me to start mapping was Crash's 2014 winter 72 hour video. I watched him build something playable in such a short amount of time, watched him go insane, I had to be a part of it. After that video I immediately watched one of his old, old tutorials on starting out with Hammer, and jumped into making my first map. Ohana has an odd story to it. Yes, Ohana means family, but that wasn't the reference. In StarCraft 2, there was a map called Ohana. It was a nicely balanced map with a warm tropical tone. It was one of my favourite maps in StarCraft 2. So while learning Hammer, I had this idea for a 5CP inspired by Ohana. But before I made an entire 5CP for my first map, I told myself, you should hold back. Take the mid and make it its own map. And this is the result. This huge, overscaled, awful map. I released two versions before I realised I fucked up bad, and ever since then I've wanted to do the concept justice and make a Tropical 5 CP, but I am yet to do so. Maybe one day. Some might say that it wasn't bad for a first map, but I hate it. We're moving on. Payload Ascend is an awful upward ripoff. It was just bad. I never released it, and thank fuck I didn't. Moving on. Ah, uh, Smithsmas Eve. My first decent map. It had some real issues. The brushwork was awful, the layout was cramped, the lighting and detail was boring and flat, but somehow it played well. I made a lot of videos documenting my progress on it, and while I was improving as a mapper, it became clear to me that this map, like all my other early ones, was flawed. The amount of work needed to fix the issues I had with it would mean essentially redesigning the map. Hint, hint, wink, wink. I only ever released one version of King of the Hill Lonely Mesa. It didn't play well, snipers loved it, and the concept just didn't work with TF2. You can see the theme here. I made a lot of shitty maps. Baby steps. Uh, roofs! Indoor maps suck! I made this map while binge watching South Park. That's really all I can remember of it. I still like the theme I was going for, but if I were to do a version now, I'd probably add little outdoors and open up that ceiling. But once again, I only released one version of it and dropped it. I'm sorry if you ever playtested any of these maps. Capture the Flag Uncooper was my attempt at making an Unreal Tournament style Capture the Flag map in TF2. One of the first bits of feedback I got was, this feels like Unreal Tournament, which made me happy. And then the next line was, which doesn't work in TF2. Dropped it once again. Frozen Fountain. Frozen Fountain and the next map I'm going to talk about will always have a soft spot in my heart because when I was developing them, I did nothing for two weeks but develop them. I was on school holidays for two weeks and I stayed up every night to work on these maps and play test them. Frozen Fountain wasn't a bad map, it just wasn't that fun, but I had fun. I wish I could say it was my last really bad Koth map, but that isn't true at all. But we'll get to that. Payload Sand Snake, a boxy, boring payload map. My attempt at Cactus Canyon. It actually wasn't too bad, and in one version I had a death pit right next to a health kit, so people kept strafing into the health kit and falling to their death. That was a lot of fun. I redid each area of the map multiple times, and each time it just started to play worse. My brushwork was real crap back then, and I had no consistency, so making changes was just a pain in the ass. It was Sand Snake that prompted me to improve my brushwork for real. Arena Boat Shed, the only arena map I've ever made. I actually like this map, I just need to update it a little. It was the first map I set out to, one, use the white dev textures, which are nicer to look at than those awful grey ones, and two, make my brushwork clean and easy to work with. It actually played well. I should finish this one. That's right, I remade Smithmas Eve. Was it better? Fuck yes. Is it good? Eh, depends. The first point has never played how I designed it, but it's never been complained about either. The second point is rarely defended. I'm not sure where I'm going wrong. Third is often complained about after three redesigns that I'm yet to settle on a last. And yet people claim to like it, and the more I've developed it, the less Christmassy it becomes. None of the points play like I want them to, and I'm not sure where I've gone wrong. I kind of passed this map on to my boy Lane to work on, so it's up to him if he progresses it at all. I think I'm done with Smith from Steve, sadly. Ho <laughs> ho! Hangar, baby! That's right, my best map yet. King of the Hill Hangar is set in a small airport. The first version had an air control tower instead of a plane, but a few versions later, and we're getting a lot like the Hangar of today. Or is this the Hangar of today? That's right, baby! We're going RC1! The, the plane is still in depth texture brushwork, but crowbar's working on it. Woo! 
There's even a hangar there. By far my best map. The map I'm most proud of. And the one that I'm well known for. Hangar is easy on the eyes and super fun to play. I'm gonna toot my own horn here. And say Hangar is the best map ever made. Baby, Valve, hit me up because Hangar is coming in for a land. And King of the Hill crop is shit. I made crop for the summer 72 hour of 2015 and it's fucking awful. It's flat and boring, snipers loved it, and the detailing wasn't too bad, but it was just too flat and meh. I hate it. To this date, it's my only 72 hour entry. I can't look at this map any longer. Uptown Funk You Up Baby, Uptown is a collaboration between myself and Lane, trying to make a two-stage payload map set in a city. Stage one had you in the streets, pushing towards a tower. Stage two, you were up in the skyscraper, pushing the bomb to an elevator shaft like Die Hard. Geronimo, motherfucker. Oh, uh, oh, didn't mean not to Sorry. buy. Stage 2 was mostly my baby and it wasn't that great. Bad brushwork strikes again, but hey, it looked kind of nice. Stage 1, on the other hand, was the dog's biscuits. It was super fun, but it had a few issues. Having an additional point, for some reason, just kept breaking at random. It didn't give a fuck, it'd just break. I've said to Lane that we should finish it sometime soon, but he's got PTSD from working on the first stage logic issues so many times, and honestly, I can't blame him. Capture the Flag Coffee is an underpass style CTF map. That means when you pick up the flag, the doors open. Or it should be, I had the dumb idea of inverting it. So getting the intel was the easy part, getting out was the hard part. I have an unreleased A3 that fixes this and makes it just like 14 bits underpass again, but I want to give the map a bit of love before I release that. Remind me later. So since crop, I haven't participated in a 72 hour, but I did partake in last year's 7.2 hour. That's right, 7 hours and 12 minutes to make a map. I decided to make an alpine themed single stage payload race. How did I do? I'm sure I would have done fine if I had remembered to put pickups down. The map had four pickups. It sucked. And looking back, I don't think the map would have been that great. I might one day fix the map, maybe. Tuscany, another fun King of the Hill map by your boy. I don't have much to say about this other than I think the theme is fun and the map plays fairly well. I'm gonna finish this one for sure. Not my map, but I think it's worth a mention. Lane's King of the Hill Sierra is a map I've had a hand in. This ramp, this route. I think it's a good map. Good job, Lane. Uh oh, he did it again! He remade one of his old maps. Sand Snake! Ne never heard of it. This is Snake Sand, baby, and you know its last is bad. Snake Sand is me doing Cactus Canyon right. Or is it my version of Upward? In this recent remake, I took a bunch of ideas from underground like limestone, cliff points like upward, winding caves like hydro, cacti like the map with canyons that never came out. Valve, please, what are you doing? Those are all of my maps as of yet. What's next though? Twice a year, TF2maps.net host a 72 hour comp- I mean, jam. To make something TF2 related in the 72 hour time. That's the challenge. Some people take it easy. They create a model, a song, write a story. But the real challenge is to make a map. To make something with fun gameplay, unique visuals, to try a game mode you're not experienced with. It's draining, mental health destroying, and so much fun. This weekend is this year's summer 72 hour jam. August 4th to 7th, and I am going to participate. Not only am I going to participate, I'm going to stream it all live and document my experience in part two of this video. And Smithmas Eve has been on my mind recently. And while the latest version is okay, it doesn't fulfill the dream of a Christmas map. And so I'm going to be making... Payload Wonderland. Payload Wonderland is set in the deep north of an unrealistic English-speaking village. A Christmas village. In this Christmas village lives a corporate scumbag named Nicholas, delivering toys once a year to only the richest of kids. In Wonderland, blue teams start in a lodge in the forest, have to push their bomb through a forest to the front gates of the village. Next, they fight through the streets, the town square, and begin fighting uphill to the workshop. They blast open the doors and destroy Nicholas's physics-breaking sleigh. I've collected a bunch of reference photos, gathered all the logic and theme stuff, and I'm fucking ready to start. Friday, the 4th, at 6pm GMT, or 10am PST, or if you're like me, 3am AEST on Saturday, Jesus Christ. Come watch me go insane and rapidly regret this decision, and even help me make the map over at twitch.tv forward slash uncooper. Let's make Payload Wonderland in 72 hours.